Understanding the circuit is the first in a series about working with electricity in an automobile. Although this introductory program will cover the basics, even some experts might learn something. To begin this journey, you will need to know about circuits. Let's start by looking at a simple wiring diagram. The power source, the battery, in an automotive circuit is represented by this symbol. The battery produces electrical power, or electricity. Electricity moves through a conductor. Copper is an excellent conductor. The opposite of a conductor is an insulator. Insulation covers the wiring to keep electricity in the conductor. This symbol represents the fuse. Fuses, circuit breakers, or fusible links provide circuit protection. Most fuses are located in the fuse block. A fuse allows electrical flow, but melts to prevent electrical flow if too much electricity flows. The switch represented here controls electrical flow. When the switch is open, electricity cannot flow. When the switch is closed, electricity then flows through. This lamp is the electrical component that the circuit is designed to operate. An electrical device is often called a circuit load. When electricity passes through this load, the filament gets hot enough to produce light. After operating the load, electricity goes back to the battery via this ground. The ground makes an electrical connection to the conductive body sheet metal, frame, or engine block metal. Another ground at the battery completes the circuit. The components of electricity are too small for us to see, but we all know they illuminate lamps and drive motors. In an automobile, the electricity starts here, the battery. The battery produces a chemical reaction that releases positive charges called positive ions and negative charges called electrons. This reaction creates electromotive force, or EMF. EMF is the force behind the flow of electrons, measured in units called volts or voltage. Electrons are forced to the negative terminal. Positive ions are forced to the positive terminal. Since like charges repel and unlike charges attract, when the switch is closed, like charges repel each other and rush toward unlike charges. When EMF, or voltage, causes electron movement, the result is a flow of electrons. This flow is called current. From a pure design and theoretical view, the electron theory of current flow describes electron flow electrons flow from the negative terminal through the circuit to the positive terminal. From a practical view, the conventional theory of current flow describes power flow. In conventional theory, power flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Holes are sometimes used to describe the flow of the positive ions from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. In Buick Service Manual Section 8A Wiring Diagrams, power flows from the positive terminal of the power source at the top of the page through the circuit to ground at the bottom of the page. The ground completes the circuit at the negative terminal. The flow of electrons can be measured. Current is the number of electrons that move past a certain point over a given time period. Current is measured in units called amperes. Every circuit resists current flow. This resistance is another component of electricity measured in units called ohms. Current flows once voltage overcomes the circuit's resistance. The lamp is the primary resistance or load device in this circuit. Now that we have a description of current flow in various types of circuits, let's see how volts, amps, and ohms affect each other. They're mathematically linked by Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that volts are equal to amps times ohms. Amps are equal to volts divided by ohms. Ohms are equal to volts divided by amps. Suppose a 12 volt circuit has a 10 ohm resistance. What is the amperage? 12 volts divided by 10 ohms equals 1.2 amps. Since your task is to repair vehicles, let's concentrate on how Ohm's law helps you predict the behavior of electricity in an actual vehicle. Let's keep battery voltage constant.
A change in resistance will have the opposite effect on current. As this IP dimmer switch lowers resistance, the IP lamp's current increases, the lamps brighten. The same holds true when resistance increases, the lamps dim. Let's take a look at another example. The ignition coils provide a dramatic example of how voltage and amperage relate. Through a process called magnetic induction, a 12-volt circuit is stepped up to 36,000 volts, but the current drops from 7 amperes to mere thousands of 1 ampere. The high voltage is required to overcome the high resistance of the spark plug's air gap. Once resistance is overcome, the spark plug fires. Now that all the electrical building blocks are identified, let's see how they can be arranged. The series circuits and the parallel circuit are the two basic circuit types that form the backbone of every circuit. Let's talk about the series circuit first. This series circuit starts at the battery, goes through this switch, the low devices, in this case two lamps, then to ground. A series circuit characteristic is that if the switch is open, or if there is a break in the circuit, the lamps go out. An application of Ohm's law here shows that regardless of the number of circuit components, current is the same throughout. Voltage across each load, called voltage drop, will be different if the resistance values are different. The sum of voltages across each load, or voltage drop, is equal to source or battery voltage. Parallel circuits are designed just a little different. A parallel circuit starts out at the battery, then divides into two or more portions called branches. Each branch contains a load device and possibly a switch. Finally, each branch goes to ground. In a parallel circuit, if one branch fails, the others remain active. An application of Ohm's law here shows that voltage across each load is the same. Current through each load will be different if resistance values are different. The sum of the separate currents equals the total circuit current. Occasionally, you'll see a series circuit with a parallel circuit in the middle. This is called a series parallel circuit. Now, let's take a look at some electrical and electronic circuit components. Electrical components we will cover include a potentiometer, rheostat, relay, solenoid, and thermistor. As for electronic components, we will cover diodes and transistors. A potentiometer is a variable resistor with a wire coil and a movable contact called the wiper. Current enters and travels through the coil to ground, as well as through the wiper to the circuit load and to ground. When the wiper is near the entry point of the coil, resistance is minimal. Most of the current exits through the wiper, so the lamp is bright. As the wiper moves across the coil, current must flow through more resistance before exiting the wiper, so the lamp dims. A rheostat is very similar to a potentiometer. The basic difference is that the coil is not grounded, so current passes through the coil and wiper. A relay is an electrically operated switch. Inside the relay are an electromagnetic coil and sets of contacts. A control circuit opens and closes a power circuit. The contacts of this relay are spring-loaded in the open position. This is called a normally open relay. Other relays are normally closed. When the control side of the circuit activates, a magnetic field builds around the coil. As the magnetic field strength overcomes the spring tension, the contacts are pulled toward the electromagnet. In doing so, the contacts close switching on the power side of the circuit. When the control circuit current stops flowing, the magnetic field collapses and the contacts open under spring tension. A solenoid is another type of electromagnetic device. Similar to a relay, a solenoid uses electromagnetic force to overcome spring tension to perform mechanical work. As the electromagnet centers the core or plunger, work occurs. For example, the deck lid release solenoid mechanically opens the deck lid lock. A thermistor 
is a thermally responsive resistor. Its resistance changes with changing temperature. For automotive circuits, the resistance value of a thermistor decreases as temperature increases. Because of Ohm's law, we know that when resistance decreases, voltage drop across the thermistor will also decrease. For example, thermistors are connected as sensor feeds to the automatic air conditioning system control module. The module uses the increase or decrease in the voltage signal to control system output. Now, let's talk about electronic components. Everyone has heard the term semiconductor at one time or another. But what is a semiconductor? A semiconductor starts out as silicon or sand. Silicon is not quite a conductor and not quite an insulator. That's why it's called a semiconductor. So how can something that has insulating properties suddenly become such an excellent conductor? The answer is a process called doping. Doping adds other elements to the pure silicon to change it into something new. Doping silicon with phosphorus results in negative or n-type material. N-type material has an excess of electrons resulting in a negative charge. Doping silicon with boron results in p-type material. P-type material has an absence of electrons resulting in a positive charge. Bonding N-type and P-type materials produces a solid-state NP diode. A diode is a one-way electrical valve. The place where the two materials bond is called a junction. The N-type side is called the cathode. The P-type side is called the anode. Power flows through the diode in the direction of the large arrow in the diode symbol. The thick vertical line indicates the diode's ability to completely block electricity flowing opposite the arrow's direction. One diode application blocks current flow in certain circuits while maintaining a circuit pathway in another circuit. This diode allows current to illuminate the lamp, then go to ground. When the relay is energized, the diode blocks flow to the lamp. So a diode can act like an electrical dead end. Another application is a clamping diode. This air conditioning compressor clutch circuit shows that current flows through the coil to ground. When the power is turned off at the switch, the coil's magnetic field collapses and induces a voltage spike. The spike produces alternating current. Unprotected, the ECM can be easily ruined by these sudden powerful surges. Now, let's add a diode. During operation, the diode blocks flow to force current through the coil. When the contacts open, the induced spike passes through the diode and back through the coil. Still another diode application involves changing AC electricity to DC electricity inside the generator. Alternating current flows one way, then the other. The diodes reflect the alternating tendency, so the entire amount of current exits in one direction. This process is called full wave rectification. Another semiconductor device is the transistor. A transistor is constructed similar to a diode with either one layer of N-type material between two layers of P-type material, or one layer of P-type material between two layers of N-type material. The result is a solid state NPN or PNP transistor. NPN transistors are the most common type used in automotive electronics. Solid state transistors are very reliable switching devices. The three electrical connections are the collector, base, and emitter. The emitter is always identified by an arrow. The arrow indicates the direction of power flow. In a circuit, the base current controls the transistor. If there is no base current, the transistor is off. But when current enters the base circuit, the transistor switches on to allow current to flow from the collector to the emitter. This switching action is accomplished extremely fast. Now, 
Let's take a look at the kinds of electrical problems with which you'll be dealing. The list includes shorts to power, shorts to ground, open circuits, and high resistance. A short to power occurs if the insulation between two circuits gets pinched or wears through. When the two conductors touch, current from one circuit enters the other circuit. This is a crossfeed that activates components in the wrong circuit. The source of this problem can be difficult to locate. A short to ground is characterized by a sudden increase in current flow because part of the circuit is bypassed. Current flow is well beyond the ability of the wire to carry it. Fortunately, if the circuit is protected, the protection device will stop current flow before substantial damage can occur. Occasionally, circuit operation halts due to an open in the circuit. Examples include a loose connector or a broken wire. When an open occurs, it's as if someone switched off the circuit. Although all circuits have a certain amount of resistance, high resistance can adversely affect circuit operation. Corroded terminal connections can cause enough resistance to render the circuit inoperative. Three types of troubleshooting tools are used to test electric circuits. The fused test lead, test lamps, and the digital multimeter. The fused test lead is used to bypass parts of the circuit in an attempt to operate the load device. If the load operates, the circuit trouble is between that point and the power source or further upstream. A test lamp is used to check for the presence of voltage. Non-powered test lamps use the vehicle battery as a power source. Self-powered test lamps use their own power supply to test disconnected circuits. Regardless, the lamp is really a continuity tester, but it doesn't really inform you as to how much current or voltage is really present. The J3409A digital multimeter is by far the tool of choice. It can do what the others do, plus it has some added features. When properly set to the voltage range, the multimeter can read a precise voltage. For example, this battery's voltage. The multimeter can also test current flow or amps. Let's test the current flow in the underhood lamp circuit. Set the range to two amps and connect the meter in series. Apply power and read the display. Another test the multimeter can do is check resistance. Be sure to test only disconnected circuits. First, set the meter to the highest ohm setting and work down until a reading appears. The coil's resistance is measured in ohms. One very handy test the ohmmeter range performs is a continuity check. The meter beeps and displays zeros when continuity exists, indicating a good wire. If not, then the meter does not beep and the display indicates infinite resistance. This program, Understanding the Circuit, has looked at electricity in an automobile. The next program will move on to electrical troubleshooting.